<laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hello. Um. Well, y'all just missed um, Maple here, my companion. This 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 cute and funny rodent. Um, funny. Funny rat. <laughs> out extraordinarily bad. <laughs> <laughs> See, I I was under the impression like I was able to be listened to, and I did that as like a <laughs> half gaff goof. Well, <laughs> but but honestly, the fact that like only you heard it makes it very funny. <laughs> Hello, Jarvel. Welcome to the stream. For, uh, I've not seen you here before, but I think. Yo, Jarvel's my homeboy. Nice. I, 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 I think you, you've gotten into like homeboy status, Jarvel. I, yeah. I think I think I've I've recognized Jarvel from lurking in in your chat. <laughs> yeah, Jar Jarvel's like the world record holder for Sonic Riders speedrunning. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, like, A, I guess. But, like, uh, <laughs> Jarvis become a fast, very cool and respected member of my community, and I'm always hyped as hell to see it, dude. Hey, I mean, that's not a bad thing, though. Hell yeah. Well, I hope you're, I hope you'll find this place nice and comfy. Um, I'm Basco. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I'm like introducing you on your own stream, <laughs> yeah, huh? Yeah, you definitely, you definitely were. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's yeah. all good. Uh, this is my friend Basco. He's very cute, very funny, uh, weirdly very relaxing for the kind of like games he plays, and also like does a lot of like physical crafts, like uh. Gunpla and Lego building. <laughs> I want to see more Gunpla. I, I you stream too early. I want to watch you make stuff. I'll do. I'll try to do a Gunpla stream uh, later in the day, just just for you, PB. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, good. Speaking of that, good after noon. Morning, wherever you may be. Good time zones, everybody. Um, we're I'm here performing for you, with Maple. Um, if you know the words, you can join in too. We're just uh, we're just gonna hang out. Uh, the yeah, we're just like hanging out. Yeah. The the intent was that we were gonna just hang out and talk about like books and stuff. I think we just kind of just started talking randomly. <laughs> that that that's just the way to do it, my dude. Yeah. What is what is hope? What just two homies holding hands in this black void I live in? <laughs> you you need like a cool like. Where do you live, Basco? Uh, I live in an undisclosed facility within the United States. Oh, Area Fifty One. I see. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, somewhere, somewhere it's TM in South Carolina. <laughs> I, I, I'm Canadian. I don't know about these, like, <laughs> these state, dilly darn states of ours. You, you, you all have, like, too many states with too many names. Yeah. Some of them, some of them are really dumb, like, um, Colorado, right? Uh huh. Colorado was originally a name proposed for California. Oh, interesting. Uh, and Colorado is specifically named after the Colorado River. Which is why California <laughs> was proposed to be called Colorado, is because the uh, Colorado River runs through it and out in the ocean. Uh, oh! California. Uh, but that was also oh. when California was uh, proposed to be. Three states instead of one giant state. 
<laughs> yeah, what the fe- what the hell's up with that? Like, you got like, wasn't it like the n- northeast that's full of like really tiny states, and then you have like California and Texas. Maple, yeah, Maple is always ass out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the situation with the states is that uh, basically more or less uh it is a consequence of modern borders not really needing to exist um Mm -hmm. the states look the way they do particularly from east coast to west coast because east coast was when europe was colonizing the united states so thus everything looks like europe right like borders up all mountains rivers not really that many straight lines right after the uh specifically like kind of right after the louisiana purchase um things started getting bigger because there was more land so territories didn't need to be as big uh and those more straight lines appearing even though a lot of them did still follow natural um borders especially if the state was on the louisiana there's a, just a giant line going down the united states and that's where the louisiana was Oh. But in particular, a lot of states actually started getting straight lines because of slavery. <laughs> Oops. That's yeah. no good. Basically, like, there, there's a straight line from, like, Louisiana, like, going over Oklahoma, Texas, Arizona, Nevada, and then, like, stopping at California. That was a line where basically the original idea was. This is where slavery will happen. Giving above it, that's not where slavery will happen. Okay. That's also why there's another just giant straight line through the United States. It's, it was a measure in an effort to prevent a civil war that still happened. It's cool. Yeah. Man, yeah, I, I can't even say anything about, like, North American slavery thing, because, like... Like, slavery wasn't a thing up here, but we still we also have, have a... skeletons. Oh yeah, we, we have a long history of, like, Prejudice. being being very shitty by being incredibly, like, racist and xenophobic. Anyways, let's not talk about this. <laughs> right? This, like, Sorry, like, I, I, don't, I don't mean to, like, just fully just, like, punch you in the face like that, but, like, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like a two VTubers should not be talking about slavery. That feels like a, just a <laughs> recipe for getting canceled. <laughs> I mean, none of us are, like... We don't have bad opinions. That being said, I'm a little uncomfortable talking about it. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's interesting conversation but not fun conversation yeah yeah exactly so instead um want to talk about some funky books funky rodents funky books i got i got my fucking gummies and my pocky out for the occasion damn i got cali strawberry pocky but it's a little too it, it still has too much dairy in it for her to eat without getting sick also I agree with Jobble here there is no bad opinions there's just opinions that make you an asshole and I'll be allowed to punch you in the face oh yeah that's that's where uh, what was it like freedom of speech comes in yeah like, like you can say room. whatever you want but like if you say some whack shit you are gonna get roasted for it and that's our freedom of speech yeah or punched in the face <laughs> that too well <laughs> as much as I would like that kind of thing to be more norm but like it, it's also like s- saying someone's a fucking moron on twitter is much more legal than punching someone. As much as I wish that wasn't the case. That's just cowardice. <laughs> I'll, 
I'll punch this, I'll punch a baby in the face. <laughs> hey, let's not talk about slavery. Let's talk about child <laughs> let's punching talk about instead. Child punching. <laughs> Um, oh, the, uh, the thing in it isn't the strawberry, but the, uh, the cream in the strawberry cream mixture. Because Callie is incredibly lactose intolerant. It's kind of out of nowhere, right? Yeah, it... I, I do not know what happened, but, like, shortly after we moved into our current apartment... Callie just started getting really, really sick over dairy. And like for a while, like she could take like lactate and kind of like handle it fine. But it was like so sudden and weird. I've been doing my best to try to find like good things that are lactose free though. And I, I think I think it's going okay. Anyway, you wanted to talk about uh, book stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah. 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 Because I, mainly because like that's that's like the big thing that I've been uh, doing recently is I've been I've been doing a lot of reading. Yeah. In particular, I've been reading a lot of. Uh, Brandon Sanderson's books and uh, also a lot of really funky fresh uh, tabletop books. Also, yeah. Hogan. <gasps> Ve vegan Nara? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a wonderful day tomorrow. Yeah, so like, just because I don't want to hold you hostage, you want to talk about your your book first, or do you want to just get straight into talking about um, eating metal? <laughs> Man, I wish. Uh, eating metal? <laughs> wish you could eat metal? Uh, something, something. I'm horny for robots. Anyway, oh. <laughs> uh. You have the longer discussion about it. Do you want to go first? I no. I feel like I feel like since I have the longer one, you should go first, so I don't like cut, like drown you. <laughs> word nut. <laughs> cool. Um, <laughs> so I don't really read like book books a whole lot necessarily. But I really do like manga and graphic novels. And uh, actually, uh, because of Vegan Nara, uh, I recently got a volume, like a physical volume of Yatsuba, which is my favorite manga of all time ever. And probably one of my favorite like pieces of fiction of all time. But, like, uh, I must have read, like, the first volume of Yatsuba, like, five plus times at this point. I just really like Yatsuba. Y Yatsuba is the, uh, the manga with, uh, the green-haired double pigtail girl, right? Yes. So, the core of it is Yatsuba is a five-year-old girl. Uh, she lives with her dad. Uh... She's just an everyday kid. Uh, she plays with her friends at her neighbor's house. Uh, she's just kind of like learning life things for the very first time. And it's both like very wholesome and cute and also way, way funnier than it has any right to be. Cause like, it's charming to see a young kid kind of just like discover things for the first time and just kind of like pog off about it but also Yasuba's a very weird kid too so, <laughs> so sometimes she'll just be like very like 
weird in a charming and wholesome kid way. And it's very funny. Um, <laughs> there's a part in like the earlier chapters of the first volume where um, like rightfully so it starts out with like Yasuba and her dad moving into their brand new house and like meeting the neighbors for the first time. Um, she ends up kind of like wandering off by herself and like her dad isn't super concerned and in fact like when he actually does meet the neighbors and it's like hey uh i have a little girl with me but she kind of wandered off like everyone's kind of like starting to worry and she's like no nah, it's fine she just does that sometimes and <laughs> He, 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 like, specifically says, if you see a kid and you think to yourself, wow, that's a weird kid, that's probably her. <laughs> like, it, it's so cute! Like, not, not just Yatsuba, like, every other character is very funny and wholesome in, like, lots of very charming ways. Like, her dad... I think it's a very underrated character because like he's not as weird but he is a he's clearly a very good dad and like you can kind of tell just by the way he acts on his own and the way he acts with Yatsuba it's like the quirkiness is something that is respected and cultivated it's hereditary <laughs> See, <laughs> almost in a sense, like, um, I don't remember what volume it is, but there is like a chapter where he does explain that like, he essentially stray cat adopted Yatsuba. Like, oh, so like, so Yatsuba is an adopted kid? Yes. Um... I think the way he described it, it was like she was like much younger than she was like in like the two to three range and like very clearly like a foreigner and like seemed to have just been either like lost to the point where finding her parents would have been impossible or just straight up abandoned and he was like okay I cannot let this child just kind of like not go without like someone to like protect her or food or shelter or anything so he just kind of literally like stray cat adopted her but like <laughs> eat the child there's actually quite a few times where like people just like pick up Yasuba and throw her. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, it, it kind of... You, you could tell Yasuba and her dad have a very, like, loving and, like, healthy relationship, because, like, her dad is... He, he's, like, a single dad working, like, at a home job. And he, like, works a lot, which is why Yasuba's, like, over with the neighbor so often. Um, but he's still, like, attentive to her needs and, like, wants the best for her as a person and a growing child at that. And it's just, like, very charming and also kind of refreshing to see someone who's, like, a real person in this kind of thing but also is a very healthy person too like that's actually something not just in Yatsuba but in uh, Azumanga Dayo the author's like other manga series they're for, for as weird as they are and like as funny as they are, they're also very grounded. 
for being like slice of life because like sometimes I feel like even slice of life can get to a point where it's like it feels unplausible that like the scenarios are happening or like the characters feel unbelievable but yeah, like b- both Azumanga Dayo and Yatsuba are very good at just like showing people in their everyday lives but in like such a pleasant and realistic way does it, does it have an anime perhaps? Mm. Azumanga Dayo does yeah, like the, um, it's, the, it's the one with like the the school children, right? Yes. Uh, if if you've seen that girl with like the, she she's got similar like young child with pigtails energy that Yasuba has. She's also got like the the cat dad. I don't um, know that, but I know that the principal fights deer at one point. No, oh, that's Nichijo. Oh. Wow. Um. As, as, <laughs> yeah, uh, um, Asamanga Dayo is the one where they have like the pinkish red uniforms. I think you're gonna need to send that to me. I don't. I'm gonna send it to you. You're gonna see it and, and you're gonna be like, oh, that's what that is. Oh, that's the chuckle. Ah, <laughs> oh, look at them go. Ah, oh, look at them go. There we go. But oh, okay. I, I recognize them. Yes. I recognize. I, re- I recognize the main character, and I know the <laughs> say the one I was going like the uh, like colon D face is not accurate, but like the one with the shorter hair. Yeah. I recognize those two. That's that's kind of. Mm-hmm. What with the pink so- there you go, the one with the pink socks. Yeah. <laughs> I- I'm actually not as familiar with as a manga as I am with Yatsuba, but I've been meaning to like read the manga. But um the thing about it, Azuma really crafts his work to work in manga format. Like, there was an anime adaptation of Azumanga Dayo, but he wasn't very happy with it, because, like, the way he structures his manga, it really takes its time to appreciate kind of the subtler, quiet moments. And... It's kind of hard to convey the sense of, like, the parts in manga where you're just kind of, like, enjoying the scenery or taking in the moment in a... Not not just really, like, an animated um, media, but, like, a animated media made for TV. Because, like, you know, obviously there's, like, you know, time limits. And, like, things have to flow well as a visual story that you are watching. Yeah. Um, so, I actually, from what I've seen of the anime, I actually really like it. Because, like, I just... The writing is lifted almost one for one from the manga. And the writing is very, very good. But, like, I definitely get where, like... You, you can pinpoint parts where, like, if this was in the manga, this would have, like, some breathing room. And, like, I, I think especially with, like, TV anime that's comedy-based, a lot of it just feels like go, 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 go. Um, Azumanga Dayo isn't really as bad as it could be, but it definitely does... I get where Azuma would feel kind of dissatisfied with the pacing so with all of that um, he has officially said that like he doesn't want to see 
or work on a anime adaptation of Yatsuba. Which that's, that's fair. Yeah, like I'm kind of glad for it too, because like <laughs> I think if Yatsuba was made into an anime, they would have to work really, really hard on the pacing. Cause there's a lot of moments, not just in like atmospheric moments taking in like the scenery or like pausing for a breath, but more just like a lot of the comedy kind of relies on there being very specific strong beats to it and like I don't think that would get across very well in an anime that has to keep it under like 20 minutes I can see maybe like one chapter of a volume or like I think like each chapter of Yasuba is like two or three different like condensed stories I could see like one of those stories going for like maybe 15 minutes if you were to like pace it out in a satisfying way I get what you mean yeah but like y Yatsuba is somehow very good at balancing both like very well written comedy and also just like letting yourself pause and like breathe in like atmospheric moments and I really like that yeah I get, I get that vibe um I <laughs> if, if you don't mind I, I feel like it's poignant me to, to mention this this story yes uh back back when I was a, a boy scout hey, back when I was a boy scout I um, I did this one like theme, right? It, it, it's called a high adventure camp. Ooh! So, yeah, I did one that was called uh, high uh, fantasy camp. <laughs> no, no, just high adventure. Basically, it, it's like taking a um, an event that you would usually have in a single camping trip and making it right. Mm -hmm. Like, like there's two that I know of that are like really big. And that that's Philmont, Philmont Scout Ranch, or Sea Camp. Which is literally just all it's called, Sea Camp. Ooh. Um, sea Camp is one where you go on a boat and you sail for a week straight. And what? Philmont is one where you hike for uh, a week straight. You go on a trek <laughs> for a week. And nice. me, me and Dad go were on the same group for the hike and we were doing training hikes right because we, you, you, it's not a thing you can really just be like okay I've trained not at all let's hike for a week <laughs> straight no you gotta get like you gotta get used to like the weight right like how, how heavy it is to actually go like how, like how it is to like get up every morning and hike for like 8 hours a day Right. Yeah. It, it, like it's one of those things where you just gotta get ready. And I, I will always remember one time where the training hike just kind of like dissolved. Right. We were we were going on a training hike again. It was like some sort of miscommunication and like resulted in the like everyone going to the wrong area except for me and my dad. And that's going cool I will like. Fuck them, we went to the right spot. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna go hike on our own, right? We're just gonna go on yeah. our own mini training hike. And I don't think I have ever just taken in the scenery and like basically like meandered and smelled the flowers as much as I did on that hike with my dad. Mm -hmm. And for some reason you just bring this up just reminded me of that uh that moment with my father. Yeah. I kind of feel the same way, almost. Like, it it sounds corny to say, but like, I think may, maybe not even just Yatsuba, but, but like, things that like have a strong theme of atmosphere 
and enjoying life even like the quieter moments can really kind of make a nice impact like that that kind of like if not teach you to appreciate those moments does kind of remind you of those little chunks of life that may have gotten overlooked you know yeah i get what you mean like <laughs> when i first read yatsuba i was on the way out of probably the most depressed i've ever been in my whole life i I think without getting into like the weirder, heavier details, um, I was in a place where like I was living on a couch and I couldn't talk to my friends very often. Like I I barely saw Callie at all after being like with her every day for like a year, and it sucked. That that was also the part of my life where like. I was so tapped on like not getting social interaction that like I kind of like used Honey Pop as like a social crutch. The game? Yes. <laughs> they oh. were all I had for like affection and interaction for like a solid couple months. <laughs> It was bad. It was real bad. <laughs> but, like, around the time where, like, I was able to, like, get my own place at Cali, um, I was at the library using the Wi-Fi. Because, like, the time, Wait, the I place I was in. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. honey, what about the library? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, the, the place I was staying at didn't have internet, which is why, like, I couldn't talk to any of my friends. But, like, uh, I would go to the library and, you know, use the Wi-Fi and, like, you know, actively talk to people. But um, that's where I read Yasufa for the first time. And I think I found it at the right time where... This sounds way heavier than I'm trying to make it out to be, but I think it really helped me learn to appreciate life more. Because, like, I, I think those vignettes of, like, like, a young child learning and, like, experiencing things in life for the first time kind of hit a chord with me as someone who basically was starting to live adult life mm -hmm. and like you know obviously it's not going to be a one-to-one -one translation of like what I was going through of course but like I think something can be kind of directly responsible going from like you know a, a chapter in Yatsuba where she's um gathering chestnuts with her friends for the first time to me cooking my first meal in my first apartment you know mm -hmm. it's like kind of like you know, things you would normally take for granted, but like kind of experiencing it for the first time just makes that moment so much more special. And I, I think it's very, very sweet and very nice. I, I appreciate you uh, bringing that up. I might need to give that a read myself, actually, because, um, I might actually be getting my own apartment soon. <sighs> oh, nice! So, 
Yeah, I, like, you know, if I'm being honest, right, like, I'm a, I'm a bit anxious about it, right? I've never lived alone before. Mm-hmm. Um, and here I am about to do that, maybe in a couple months. <laughs> yeah! Oh, if, if that goes, uh, goes through for you, like, super congrats. It's actually super awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit just, you know, nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah. I, there is definitely like a bit of like have you ever been like house sitting before yeah like for like uh, a week yeah like kind of like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's have you ever had that feeling when you were house sitting where you start to kind of like get to the mindset of like like, like the nerves pass and you're just like, oh, sweet, I'm in the house all by myself. Yeah, I, I get it. it it's kind of like that, actually. Nice. I, I, I've had, like, the sentiment of if you learn how to do insert adult thing, it's very liberating, kind of ruined for me. But, like, I feel like living by yourself is probably, like, the most liberating thing I've experienced. Like, yeah, that's as you literally going out on your own, right? Throwing, throwing down your own stakes. And, uh... Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I get what you mean. It's, uh... It's definitely one of those things that it's like, you know, I'm, I'm just nervous about it, so I think maybe reading something like that might help out, just like how... It was helping you out, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I was need to figure out if there's a library here. I would be surprised if there isn't. Oh, yeah. I, I'm i glad libraries are pretty much everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Even, if, even if some people are like, oh, it's dying. I'm like, please, please don't. <laughs> please just stay stick around, uh, library. I don't even, like, use the library super often, because, like, I'm not a big reader, but, like, I'm glad public facilities are there just for people to go to and maybe do something for, like, an afternoon for free. I get what you mean, yeah. It's, uh... Yeah, just, just, uh, I'm a bit of a... (laughs) I'm not sure if you know this, man. But I'm a bit of a, I'm a, bit of a reader. Ah, <laughs> uh, you don't say. Yeah, we've well, never guessed. Only man, worked you're... at a Barnes and Noble for two years. Yo, you're freaking my brain right I now. I know, right? I'm, I'm rocking your beam. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, you know, I, I want to be... Like, I know there's Barnes and Nobles here. I try, I try to find, actually... Uh, mm-hmm. This is this is like sli- a side tangent, but I guess it's just like me realizing how different states are from one another. I tried applying to a um, another Barnes and Noble here mm-hmm. uh, to get a job, and yeah. they were paying way less than the one at my original Barnes and Noble. And I'm like, can you guys not match? And they're like, no. I can at most <laughs> can carry across your raises. So I'm like, cool. How much is that? Uh, they said 50 cents. So I'm like, ah. So instead of making $9, I'd be making it nine fifty. Oh, that sucks. And so I proceeded to go like, I'm going to try to find a different job. And I found yeah. Lego. And they pay me thirteen twenty five, which is more yeah. which is the most I've ever been paid in my life. Yeah! So, you know, moving up in the world, even if it's not quite living wage yet. I think for Greenville, actually, that is kind of living So, it's not that big. It's mainly just gas at this point. God, yeah. gas. <laughs> Man. Or removal like that. Why? 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 Does the world need to be so car focused? Why does North America need to be so car focused? Shit's annoying. It reminds me of a meme I saw once where it's like, you know, 
think I said it to you. If, if it's the one I'm thinking of, I want to see it again because I love that meme. Is it, is it the, um, the Americans be like, gas prices are too high. My brother in Christ, he made the car dependent infrastructure. <laughs> yes, I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fuck, man. I wish I wish cars were not so needed, but here we are. Actually, I live yeah. on the East Coast now. It's, it's not as dependent. The East Coast is not as dependent on cars. Interesting. That's yeah, cause, cool. Because no, because like it's, it's like how like the Canadian East Coast, like how those like fifty billion cities just kind of like lined up along the coast. <laughs> oh man, yo, Alberta is exactly like that. Like. It's not coastal, but like we have like, um, we have like Calgary and then Edmonton and then like a lot of the other, um, prairie provinces are like the same way. And like, technically there is the Canadian rail line that goes all across the country, but it's also kind of like steam train stuff, you know? I definitely think we could, um, at least America could have, um, <laughs> really improved their, um, rail system. Because most of the rail systems are used for transporting military goods now. I didn't want to bring up Regina, Regina. but, like, I was thinking about Is it. That... <laughs> uh, that's in Saskatchewan, I think. Regina. A Regina. Yeah. You can fascinate a Regina by giving it a piece of cheese. <laughs> have, have you seen that that image that I like to do when I'm horny posting? Which one? Uh I guess it is more than one at this point, right? Uh where where is it? Yeah, there's like a couple that I feel like you do when you're horny posting. Uh, th <laughs> this one specifically. With, with the rat. Oh, the lust. Yeah, the, ra the rat <laughs> lust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. There's, um, for some reason why I think of you horny posting, I'm thinking of like the, the, um, long rat. Like the, the woe be upon you. Or like, whoa, plague upon you. Of, of like, um, Eminem throwing that rat, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. I, I've had multiple people, like, I think you were the first one to make an edit like that. I think I did. I think I was the, I was the, I think I was the first to really try to tap into your meat potential. Your meat ability. <laughs> I think I've had like a couple other people make the exact same edit with the exact same cheese maple, and that makes me so happy. Cheese. Cheese. So, so you know how we have like a lot of people that we consider like Naka adjacent? Yeah, yeah. I I think I'm at that point where like I'm like Senwa clinic adjacent almost like Albo's group because like every time I'm in like a chat room with like Albo and like a few other Senwa people I have no just like Senwa, actually. there's Albo Snowfield Yuki Kofi Maitri uh, like two more Oh, uh, the music is overpowering your voices. So I can barely hear Basco. Says Jarble. Oh, let me turn it down. Why? Yeah, what, hang on. Why Why is my microphone so... What happened here? Did I bump? I'll just pick up my gain a bit. It's all good. Uh, hopefully that's better. I don't know why my uh, thing was going down so much. 
Huh. It could be the fact that I, I, I am in a slightly different position compared to what I usually am, which is, um, sitting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm standing up right now, so it could be different, so. Yep, yeah, Masco wanted to, like, do, do some standing desk-ass nonsense. Yeah. My <laughs> bad. Plus, I had to, like, mess around with the... the audio last stream so how it is you mess with it once and it's just, you can never recover <laughs> also uh i don't know what saskatchewan song you are referring to jarble because i i know there's like the provincial theme but i i don't know if there's like a specific version that you're into. Also, like, <laughs> this is weird to say, it may be kind of mean, but like, I live in essentially Canada's Texas. <laughs> Alberta straight up is Canada's Texas. Like, people wear fucking bolo ties here. And we have a big oil industry. We have... Calgary has, like, yearly, like, rodeo festivals going on. But, wait. Um... Is it... I thought, like, Quebec was the, like, the Texas of Canada. Since it constantly wants to secede, but doesn't have the balls to go through with it. Yes. Well, that that part's the Texas of Canada in, like, that sense. I, I think, like, the the stereotypical, like, culturally yeehaw thing, like, that's an Alberta thing, I think. Mm. I guess technically that could extend to, like, our surrounding BC and Saskatchewan. But, like, I haven't really been pretty yeah. anywhere else outside of Alberta because, like, I'm barely kind of, like, you know, keeping it under the radar as is, you know? Yeah, I, I got what you mean. Can, <laughs> can, I, can I mention real quick? This is mm. slightly off topic. This is actually incredibly off topic. Go for it. I, I just discovered something. Yeah. There's a tr so you So, you know, like girl boss quotes like the ones that like like they, they put on like mugs and like shirts and they'll like <laughs> like live laugh love and stuff like that you know what i'm talking about yo i used to work at a staples and so okay like, so that <laughs> shit was everywhere at yeah. staples so, so you know what i mean then right yeah they apparently found one quote from fallout fallout new vegas specifically which is, you know, it's it's probably it's probably the one that you you you'd think about, right? Which is the I survived because of the fire. Uh, the I survived because the fire within me burned brighter than the fire around me. They don't realize that it's from that line is from a war criminal. <laughs> wait, the, wait, did did they like? take that line verbatim. out of context verbatim yes oh they no they 100% <laughs> did Th that line so for those who have not played the the dlc that line comes from uh i think his name is joshua graham um which is like his like found again name like you know sometimes like people converting to christianity will get a new name i think that's yeah. what his situation was he, mm. he was originally part of a, a faction named the Caesar's Legion, which is a whole other kind of the suck shit, right? Uh huh. But we'll, I'll get into that later. Basically, what happened is that in Fallout New Vegas, before the game begins, a war between a nation known as the Caesar's Legion and the New California Republic happens, right? It was like a whole war goes down uh, over the Hoover Dam, right? Uh -huh. Um, Caesar wants the Hoover Dam because it is like the only way to really cross the uh, the Colorado River 
and also it's like basically like a full-on like bridge right to get into las vegas or new vegas in this case the ncr wants it because they want to power the new california republic with the hoover dam because it's pretty much intact um the ncr wins the war right they, they win the first battle of hoover dam and the general who was joshua graham was lit on fire by Caesar and then thrown down the Grand Canyon. Holy shit. He survived. Horribly scarred, but he survived. Um, and basically him saying that is what you, was what you... Is, the, is, the, is what he says to you after you ask, how the fuck are you not dead? Because you got thrown down the Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> I keep in mind he is a war criminal he has killed hundreds upon hundreds of people both after he became a Christian because he that's what happened he became a Christian uh-huh because he was thrown down the Grand Canyon and then he floated into Zion aka Utah which is already <laughs> bad step right bad step right there <laughs> bad move um and he becomes a Christian. And he says, he says like, oh, I survived the fire because uh, the fire inside me burned brighter than the one around me. That's him saying how he didn't die from being like executed, right? And it's so fucking funny to me that these girls, like here, right? It's like, it's like the, the, the girl boss is just, let me find pictures. This, this is the only way I can really describe it. Yeah, pl please tell me. Cause like, I, I want to see this. Man, Fallout's fucking wild. Fallout is wild, but that is one reason why I like it. You, you said this was uh, New, New Vegas. Yes, this is New Vegas. Okay. Yeah, I'll just I'll just show the the meme that I discovered this from. Yeah. Uh, I'll post it in this, and I will, I'll also bring it up on on screen so everyone can see. Oh, no way. It's on real things. Yeah, on real things. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Man, I thought these, like, you were just talking about, like, Instagram-ass, like, motivational pictures. I wish I was, too. <laughs> Oh my god. Man, it's even in like the girl boss font and everything. Yeah, it is. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, it just has that font. It's the girl boss font, yeah. Okay, hang on. I need, I need, to, I need, to, I need to bring out the big guns. <laughs> I need to bring out the big guns here because I forgot the Twitter saves in the weird format. Like, J... F F I F or whatever, right? It's super weird. Yeah, like those T I F Fs or whatever. Hope y'all heard that error sound. No, Basco. Wait, hey, hey, Basco. This is this is this is it. Y'all see this shit? It's like it's on it's on an actual shirt. It's on an <laughs> actual shirt. <laughs> You you see what I mean by like girl boss font though. Yeah, it's the girl boss font. This is a, this is maybe like a weird question to ask, but like I saw this a lot when I was working at Staples. Did they have this kind of thing at Barnes and Noble? Yeah. Okay. So so you know. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't it okay. wasn't a huge thing in Barnes and Noble, but it it did it did um periodically appear in like uh in like merch and stuff like that like like uh book related merch like mugs yeah right? like a lot of time on mugs uh or uh probably more often than not appears a lot on like socks for some reason we sold huh. socks we sold a lot of socks at Barnes and Noble it was super weird interesting 
the, I, I kind of glad you clarified on that because like my experience with this kind of thing at Staples was like you know Staples is like an office store that also has like not just like you know like paper ink but they had like you know mugs and post-it notes and like post-it note holders and pen holders and like shit like that I saw like this kind of thing a lot on like like folders post-it note holders weird mugs and like placemats I guess like office environment like you, you ever see like those things at office stores where they're just like a monthly calendar but it's like the size of like a desk and you're supposed to put it on like your desk yeah yeah i know the one you're talking about i find yeah, those like, always super kind weird of thing. yeah i always I always found in general uh like uh, fuck, calendars. I, was, I forgot the word for calendars all of a sudden. I, I always, I always thought that the calendars were like super weird, right? Because like I get why they exist, right? Like it's not, it's not, it's not an issue of me being like, oh, wow, time sure is weird, e, right? It's more like <laughs> it, for me, it's definitely more like a situation of. Why does there need to be so many calendars? Right? It could be also like a heavy disdain <laughs> form from having to sell box calendars. Oh my um, god. At Bonson Noble during the holiday season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I hated those so much. Like, holy shit. That oh my god. Box calendars suck. They yes. suck so much. Sure fucking do. Holy shit. Man, what? A, a, a God, a God forbid. <laughs> God forbid that some chuckle fuck supreme dickwad orders one online. Right? Because you gotta get the exact one also order won't work. Yes. Yes. Uh, and oh my there's God. so many times when like they order like fucking like five or ten and i'm like why do you need so many box what? calendars why are people ordering five to ten of them at once what the fuck exactly and then more so it's more like i i hate you so much right now <laughs> i i am just going to throw in a random box calendar and if you don't like it then fuck you and your mom <laughs> oh my god I, I'm so glad, like, I don't know why this happened more than once, but, like, I'm so glad someone else has, like, retail selling of calendar trauma. <laughs> Fucking. So, I worked at the Staples for, like, a year. And, like, kind of, kind of weird to buy yearly calendars, like, midway through the year, you know? Mm-hmm. So people would just like buy their calendars at like um, the quarters of the year, like business quarters specifically. And I remember working through Q1, which I think is like January to Marchish, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So we had. You know, like desk calendars, wall calendars, uh, daily planners, weekly planners, monthly planners, pretty much anything that could hold dates in a calendar format, we had it. And not only did we sell out of like everything fast as fuck during like the first like month of Q1, but like people coming in kind of late to the game would get so mad that they didn't have their one specific calendar that they wanted. God! God damn it, yeah! Like, how much difference is it gonna make with, like, your daily planner starting from, like, one day off or, like, 
having a different format than the one you want. Like, it's not it's not that deep. For me, it was like, <laughs> oh no, you don't get the Seinfeld edition where it shows Jerry Seinfeld's penis in high definition. And it's for this year and the month, this month is misprinted. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. HD <laughs> cock and balls. The, the limited edition Seinfeld calendar that includes bonus Kramer Live the Laugh Factory. I feel like, honestly, I feel, I feel like Lex would like the calendar. Yes. <laughs> that, that's a very accurate assumption about Lex. Yeah. <laughs> that just feels like that just feels like a, a thing that that Lex would uh, seek seek yeah. out. Lex was on a really big like Seinfeld kick for a little bit. Oh yeah, you don't even know. <laughs> when I got the job at Lego, Lex asked me if I could get the Seinfeld set for them. <laughs> and I offered. Yeah. I offered. We have it right now. I also offered if Timora wanted to get the the tiger with the asshole. Yeah. Why does the tiger have a butthole? I don't know. I think it was because <laughs> they were trying to go for like anatomic correctness. It's like the insides have like organs and stuff. Because, oh, like, there's, what? Like, there's like pieces like representing like the heart and like rib cage and brain and like intestines. What the fuck? That's cool. So I think they were trying to go for for anatomical correctness. So that means they must give it a butthole that's a pink flower. <laughs> butthole. Try tongue butthole. Try finger butthole. Oh, yeah. Speaking of, I wanted to ask, like, how much the Sonic one was. The Sonic set? Yeah. Uh, 69. Nice! Yeah, 69. I don't have the money for it right now, but like later. Yeah, I mean if you if you want, you know, oh we'll get fire for it. Huh. I mean you don't have to. I mean it's half off for me. Oh yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Yeah, by uh, the way, to those who are new to my stream, which by the way, if you are should totally give me a follow. Um especially if you enjoy my stream or and or maple magic here. Um, I work at Lego. I get Lego half, half off, so that's pretty fucking pog. <laughs> I love like the second you were like, "Yeah, I'm working at Lego now." We get like really good discounts. Everyone was just like fucking beating your meat off at it. I listen. I beat my meat off at the fact that I work at Lego. <laughs> Like I think I think like with every stream at least once I've like humble bragged about um <laughs> getting getting the uh getting the thing. Yeah, getting I mean the job. I mean for what it sounds like, it sounds just like a good job and a job you enjoy anyway. Which Correct. like you know Yeah. So I've been playing <laughs> Because I'm a five-year-old too, probably <laughs> with undiagnosed ADHD, I have been playing with the core fighter of the Victory 2 gun that I built on stream a while ago. And yes, I've been making whooshing sounds in my in my in my head <laughs> as I do that. I just dropped it like a big gingus. You're so cute. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm no. glad. <laughs> I'm glad, like, you're also kind of, like, fidgeting just because. What do you mean? <laughs> like, just just because? Oh, like, like I've been, like, playing, like, mobile games this whole time, too. Just, like, talking to you and also doing something with my hands. Yeah, I have, I have not been diagnosed. Um, honestly, I've been debating trying to get, like, an official diagnosis, or if I'm just, like, I don't know, 
fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... I'm actually in therapy currently to see if I can get diagnosed ADHD. So, who knows? There's a chance I might get diagnosed with ADHD. And if I do... Neat. <laughs> yeah, I have yeah. a label for why... I perpetually bounce my knees or whoosh, <laughs> or whoosh my my core fighters around. So I I I don't stream Wednesdays anymore because I started therapy and like therapy's my uh Wednesdays are my therapy day. But this whole time during my therapy session, like I would just kinda like stimming with like one of my hair ties the whole time and I was like <laughs> I didn't really think about it until now but I was like oh yeah I forgot I'm going to these therapy sessions to see if I can get diagnosed ADHD <laughs> I'm just like doing the stim and the fidgeting like the whole time today <laughs> did you know speaking of stim do you know the one reason why snow leopards hold their tails in their uh, mouths is because it gives them stimulation. Yeah! I learned that recently and it's adorable. Yeah. Also, Jarble, I will have none, none of the mobile game slander, especially since I am saving and trying to save up gems in Love Live All-Stars before <laughs> my favorite character's I... birthday banner. I... I'll have you know. I regret to inform you, I've wailed for the first time in the mobile game. <gasps> oh, what, what you playing? I... I spent $40 last week mm -hmm. to get parts from Gundam Breaker Mobile. Yeah! Uh, because the suit was a suit I really liked, and it was a limited time suit, so that means that was the only time you could really get it, except for like maybe at the very end of the year. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> I I spent forty dollars to get a suit called the Gaon. Nice. And I didn't even get all the parts for the Gaon. <laughs> that, I got that. <laughs> Good. I got its head, its chest, and most importantly, its, its backpack is so fucking cool. Like, its backpack is, is like, it, it has this giant, like, cowl. But the cowl is actually two giant hands that have beam saber funnels at the end. So, like, what? it has, a, like, it does this thing, like, and it has, a, in the game, it has an EX thing. It's like an EX skills like a super movie can do, right? Like, I think like yeah. every gacha game has something like that, right? Like like an EX skill, uh, noble phantasm, whatever, right? Yeah. Whatever Cookie Run has, but like super moves, <laughs> right? And it literally yeah. like it's it's the art, it's the hands activating, and it's just like like the the beam sabers come out of the fingers, and then it just aggressively wiggles its fingers for a second. Boy just like, <laughs> just like grabs the motherfucker. <laughs> this is such a weird wind up of just seeing me like jump up and like flex and like my these big hands just start wiggling the my, their fingers like jazz hand <laughs> style aggressively before just grabbing them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, first I, of all, <laughs> oops, I, I sorry see, you go. I want to see if my Pocky audibly snaps. I heard it. Hell yeah. I'll, I'll post a picture of the Gaon for you. Yes, please do. Do, do y'all want to see the Gaon too? I'll, I'll show you the Gaon too. I'll put it on stream. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say, like, if if anything, I'm glad you your only whaling experience was forty dollars. 
Yeah, I, I realized it could have like it could have been way way worse. I have wailed twice in my life on two different games, and they are both discontinued games. You love to see. <laughs> you you fucking adore seeing it. I'm gonna do this the hard way because it's for some reason. For some reason, like I, I've noticed that when using Google now, it doesn't like uh, save things as like PNGs or anything anymore. It's like a really weird like web file. It doesn't work. Oh, web P. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to not make it. Man, but, fuck web P. All my homies hate web P. But here, here's the um, here's the suit in voice text and then let me put it up on Leas. Whoa! Look at this chonky lad. But yeah, here's here's the gay on. Uh, chat, this is the suit I wailed $40 for, for and I only got its head, chest, and backpack. <laughs> Which is honestly not that bad. I think that I think those are the parts that matter. Like, really matter, you know? Yeah. Especially the backpack. The backpack and heads. Yeah, Maple's a Gundam now. Aw, oh, bitchin'. You're a gay on now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the gay lord. But yeah, that... <laughs> that, was, that was my first experience with, with whaling in a... Um, the gacha game because that that is my favorite suit from Gundam G Reco. Um, other than another suit, but I like the pilot because um, I'm gonna be horny on main. Pilot, but the other suit I really like is a buff woman. Uh huh. A buff woman who is a total mom. Like uh -huh. I'm talking about. She 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 put she installed like a pull up bar in her cockpit, but she also <laughs> she also like makes like sandwiches and stuff for all like her like her crew and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. Uh, also, she wears tights like a bodysuit tight. That's that's also pretty like nice. But anyways. Uh, <laughs> enough with being horny on main. <laughs> uh, uh, imagine being allosexual. This post I... made by demisexual gang. What? Wait. What is, what is allosexual? Uh, allosexual means you have sexual attraction. Oh, like it... at all? Yeah. Oh. Like, like asexual and like the asexual spectrum is like. Not having sexual attraction in like, one I, way or another. I, I know and allosexual part. is. I know that part. I just didn't know what allosexual is. It, it's kind of like the equivalent to like what cis is in a trans sense. To kind of like okay, give it yeah, like a comparison. Okay, I, I, get, I get what you mean there. Or, or like heterosexual, I guess. I guess. I'm eating my pocky. Yeah. I, I, I look fucking cool with like my pocky stick just hanging out <laughs> on my mouth. I, I, um, shit. This is coming full circle here. I've been reading a book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's by Brandon Sanderson. Um, it's called, uh, Mistborn. Mm -hmm. And one reason why I stopped beating. Uh, Brando Sando is because I heard that his magic systems are really, really well developed uh -huh. uh, to the point where, like, he, he does he has like lectures, like college lectures on how to do um, magic systems, and like people go by quote unquote the Brandon Sanderson laws of magic now. When Whoa! Comes, like he he invented the way that people measure magic systems now in narratives. That's which, awesome. Which, what the which, hell? Basically, which basically is, um, uh, oh, what's it called? 
it's it's uh hard versus soft and then like that's like that's like the x-axis right and then the <laughs> y-axis is understood versus not understood so you can have like a hard magic system but not have it be understood yeah uh, or you can have like a soft magic system but people know it very well um, yeah so like in that case right like soft magic system that's known very well it's like um harry potter right mm -hmm. very soft magic system, magic system that being soft is like more whimsical kind of just happens right like there's not really rules to it in harry potter there's not really any rules or anything people just kind of do magic and it just kind of happens yeah like the only rule there is you have to be um eugenics into being able to do magic but um you know that's neither here nor there which is a little bit of a yikes but this is yeah, also jk rowling we're talking about that's the, the thing with that is like i understand why people do hereditary magic systems like i think it's like the weakest form of, of magic but like i mean that's just what sorcerers are in D, &D right yeah exactly yeah like it's not that it's a bad thing inherently it's just like with the kind of writing around it it can come off as a little oofy it doesn't help that it's also jk rowling which is like i bring it up too because um in mistborn the magic systems is misborn except for one because it's actually get this there's three magic systems in misborn ooh um two of them hereditary so you mm -hmm. need to be born with um the ability to do the magic that yeah. being said one of them is pure hereditary right so that being it is only emerged because that per like some random fuck big mike over there right like thousands <laughs> upon thousands upon thousands of years in the past was born with the ability to do that magic um i think i think the official term for the book like it's like it's also like a part like a bigger series called the cosmere i think magic in the cosmere is called the vestiture uh -huh. I don't know. Um, I've not read enough to get a definitive answer. Mm -hmm. But uh, in uh, so like there's only one that's like purely hereditary. There's the other one that's hereditary. You can still become it if you find the proper thing to make you into the magic thing. And then the other one is just you gotta get stabbed a lot. <laughs> I'm not even joking. You gotta get stabbed a lot, and then you can become a a. Uh, that magic user. <laughs> Wild. Um, but the reason why I bring it up is because uh, you said allosexual. And uh -huh. for some reason that reminded me of the magic system, which is called uh, the main one, as in the one that the main character has, called um, allomancy. <laughs> uh, which is spelled, uh, okay, I gotta do no cursing for, I think, five minutes. So I'll put on a timer. I forgot I had that redeem. <laughs> How's it feel to not fucking swear, you fucking maroon? <laughs> um, yeah, the 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 Alamancers in in the this is gonna be really hard because I say like the f word sometimes as easily as like breathing. <laughs> oh yeah, like, it's a very good filler word. Yeah. Um. The, the Allomancers are super weird uh, because they eat metal. Oh! They eat metal yeah. and that's how they, do, they they divine their power is through eating metal. That's interesting. And th that being said, right, they can't be like, ah, yes, a bracelet made of gold. I'm going to eat this. Right? They can't do that. That'll make them sick because they're eating a fucking... <laughs> Get owned, idiot! <laughs> I, need to make, I don't even have like a punishment or anything for that. 
I don't even have a punishment. I, I just shame, I guess. Uh, you you have to kiss Maple Magic. Fuck her up, BB. <laughs> That's so terrible. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever will I do? <laughs> Well, we'll we'll think of a punishment for yeah. you later. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, like the 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 um. What was I saying? They 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 can't eat like a gold bracelet, right? Because it it um. It will it will like physically hurt them, right? They they still have like normal mouths. Yeah. So what they do is uh, like they have like a metal file. And they like file metal into alcohol, Whoa. Uh, like, like vials of alcohol or water. Usually alcohol because alcohol is non-corrosive compared to water, which will cor uh, corrode some of the metals that they need. Yeah. Um. So they they like take shots and they get magic basically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and a super neat like here. Let me get the book because like this like a, like a whole hecking um. Like, like a chemistry table on what the different metals do. Right, like different metals do different things. Yeah. Uh, let's see. If you don't mind me popping off, of course. Please do. All right. So, by the end of the the first trilogy, uh, there is sixteen metals total. Um, and the the metal the metals are all the same too, like the ones that actually do magic. Yeah. The the it is iron, steel, tin, pewter, zinc, brass, copper, bronze, lithium, latium, gold, electrum, aluminum, and dravalium. Um. Yeah. Wait, so is this like a D and D dragon thing where they get different powers based on the metal? Uh, kind of. So like, uh, I was actually just about to get into that. Right, different metals do different things, and some people can only burn uh burn one metal, and that's uh -huh. what that's what's called a misting. Or like a misting can only burn one metal. So like for instance, a misting might be able to burn iron or a individual misting might be able to do bronze or copper, uh, uh -huh. but they cannot do like all of them or so they will get sick. Uh, yeah. Then there are people who can do all of them, well called mistborn, and they can do it without getting sick. Um, and if you want, I could go over what they do metals yeah pop off so there's three there's three different met like uh magic systems so i guess i'll focus on allomancy for the time being but yeah. like allomancy which by the way i appreciate i actually had this i mentioned this last stream uh the suffix so like mancy kemi urgy stuff like that that oh that's my timer <laughs> 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 I can say fuck now without being punished. Um, they they actually all have meaning. I didn't realize that, right? But they, they do have meaning, and it's actually kind of important. Because mm -hmm. mancy means to divine something. So, like, is you're kind of getting something out of nothing. Um, yeah. Like pyromancy or water, like or hydromancy, stuff like that. That is being able to create the object. And then control it, uh, kind of uh. out of nothing, right? Um, something like chemi implies you're working with something that already exists, right? Your like chemistry, right? Yeah. Or alchemy. Um, huh. Then there is like urgy, which is to work something, like work magic out of something, right? Like. Uh, that, that's why uh, thaumaturgy is a word, right? Thaumaturgy literally means working miracles. So you're creating miracles out of work. 
Huh. Uh, the reason why I bring this up is because the three magic systems in Mistborn are called Allomancy, Barakemi, and Emerald. Hemalurgy. Sorry. Hemalurgy. Huh. Um, I thought that was kind of neat. That and, is neat. And it actually did have like a thing to me, right? Because like I've, I've been trying to write my own stories recently. Yeah. And I I had to like consider uh, how I was naming my magic system, and I didn't know this until I started really looking into it. I'm like, oh, the suffixes matter, and then based on what they do, they, they actually fit in. Right? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. But, um, the all the all the all magic abilities. <laughs> <clears throat> so, iron. So, you, you actually notice this kind of, this is kind of a cool thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, iron. Pulls on nearby metals. Steel. Pushes on nearby metals. Tin. Uh -huh. Increases senses. Computer increases physical abilities. Zinc, by its emotions, by its basically being flaring emotions. Yeah. Uh, brass soothes emotions. That's self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. Copper hides alimantic pulses. Um, so like you can like uh, hide the fact you're an alimancer with with someone who's a, a copper burner, right? Yeah. Uh, bronze. Reveals alimantic pulses. Uh, oh. Atium, which is a fictional metal, uh, sees other people's futures. And then Melatium, which is another fiction, a fictional metal, allows you to see other people's pasts. Gold allows you to see your own past. Electrum allows you to see your own future. Aluminum destroys your alimantic reserves. And Duvalium enhances your alimatic reserves. Interesting. Yeah. So if you notice, there is a internal and external version for each ability. And even even if it doesn't seem like it, like um, for instance, like tin tin and pewter, right? People might not be like, oh, that's not um internal versus external but if you think about it, it kind of is because tin enhances your internal ability to perceive the world pewter enhances your external ability to affect the world yeah um yeah so i think that's kind of neat right uh it, it is i this is probably cheesy to say but like it kind of reminds me of the way like like stone stuff works I, I don't know if there's like a word for it but like when people are like oh I have like like the, like the stone aura shit oh yeah 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 I know what you're talking about yeah yeah uh... like with metal instead of rocks <laughs> yeah kind of and then, and then Ferrochemy is super neat. Because Ferrochemy is using your own abilities for later use. So, <laughs> so this one's a little confusing. The way it works is that you basically have to store it by giving it up for the time being. So, like, for instance, um, the Ferrochemy chemi abilities, same metals, by the way. It's uh -huh. like iron fire chemi stores physical weight. Steel stores physical speed. Tin stores senses. Pewter stores physical strength. Zinc stores mental speed. Uh, brass stores warmth. Copper stores memories. Bronze stores wakefulness. Atium stores age. Latium is unknown. Gold stores health. Electrum is unknown. Aluminum stores identity. I don't really know how that works. Interesting. Uh, Duralium stores connection. Which I don't really know how that one works either. Because I <laughs> haven't gotten into it in the book. But it sounds interesting. <laughs> That's um, 
really cool. So, so effectively, effectively, what that means, right, is that um, what, what what you do is that you you give up that said thing. So, like with iron, right, give up your your physical weight to store it for later use, right? And it is proportional to the time you actually store and how much you do. So, <laughs> for instance, right, with with the age, right, uh, with etium can store your age all the way up to the point where you are like a wrinkled sack of skin and bone right for like let's just say 10 days yeah 10 days in the future you can tap into that youth and reverse your aging for for 10 days or you can become even younger so let's say for five days you condense that 10 days down to five days and you turn into a baby. <laughs> right? Or you can be not as youthful, but for 20 days. Interesting. Right? So, so like, let's just say, like, you do that for when you're 20, right? 20 years old, so you're, you're age for 10 days, right? You're 40 now. Tap into that age. You can turn yourself back into a 20 year old for 10 days or you can turn yourself into a 10 year old for five days or you can turn yourself into a 30 year old for 20 days does that make sense yeah yeah so that that's what that does and what's really neat what's super cool yeah elomancy and ferrochemy can occur in the same person Huh. So, want to hear what the big bad of the first book did to live for 10,000 years? Yes, yes. He would store his age in Etia. Uh-huh. Right? So he, he basically would store his age. And we discovered that when someone stores their abilities in, in metal and then there are an, uh, an alamancer eats it, they get that reserves, right? They get those reserves back. Huh. So the 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 Lord Ruler was an Alamancer and a Ferrochemist. So he would store his age, and then eat the metal. Right. He would eat the metal, and get that youth back for free, using his Alamancy. So he would use his alamancy to remain young. So he'd be burning his age to remain young. And then he would store that compounded age in in metal again. And he would just keep doing that over and over again. And that's how he lived for thousands of years. <laughs> Game in the system. He is. <laughs> oh, that's badass. What the hell? Yeah, it's super cool, right? And like, <laughs> I felt really proud because I was able to guess that in the book before they revealed it at the very end. Because yeah. they, they were, he was that consistent with the rules of how, how things work. <laughs> it was so cool. That's awesome. And then Humilurgy is super interesting because it is stealing abilities. So yeah. you got you got to stab someone with the metal, uh, and they have to be compatible with the metal. So like a like a ferrochemist or an alamancer, right? You got to yeah. stab them with the metal and then stab yourself with the metal, and then you get those those abilities mm -hmm. from that person. You, you're stealing their ability. Yeah. Um, and they're they're once again same metal, so I'm not gonna say like iron, steel, so on and so forth. So. Just know that the order I said is the same order that I've, I've gotten for all the other ones. So, like, yeah. you get Steel's Strength, Steel's Physical Alamancy, Steel's Senses, Steel's Physical Ferrochemy. So, like, stealing someone's strength uh, reserves. Yeah. Steel's Emotional Fortitude. Yeah. Uh, Steel's Cognitive Ferrochemy. Uh -huh. Steals mental fortitude, steals mental alamancy, steals any power <laughs> unknown. 
Steals Hybrid Ferrochemy. Steals Enhancement Allomancy. Removes all powers. And then steals connection and identity. So, okay, so so stealing identity feels a little more easier to grasp oh. as a concept. Oh. Thank you, Fotia, for the follow. <gasps> yeah! I hope you're enjoying the stream so far. <laughs> Hello! We're talking about a nerdy-ass magic system in a book. Hell yeah. I hope I'm not boring you, Maple. I'm sorry. No, I, I've been, like, mad invested. This is actually. the book uh, Mistborn, or the Mistborn Trilogy, by Brandon Sanderson, uh, also known as the author who finished The Wheel of Time, um, if you know what that series is. I just found how how this works. With the 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 etium, it will steal anyone's abilities. The, okay, I I think I just understood what happened. What happened? <laughs> so with the etium being able to steal anyone's abilities, there's a chance that you might be able to steal someone's ability of being a misborn by stabbing yourself with some some etium. Mm -hmm. Uh, which might explain how the main antagonist of the first book was also a a Mistborn. As well as being a ferrochemist. He might have stolen the Mistborn sauce from someone. <laughs> that special sauce. Yeah, that special sauce that makes them be able to bore metal. <laughs> <laughs> and like... Apparently, according according to most fantasy author circles, Mistborn is like the most hard magic system to ever be made. Like it's borderline superpowers nice. uh, that like fully explain. Uh, meanwhile, like his other books, like uh, another really big one right now is the Stormlight Archive. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Stormlight Archive, is, its magic system is about oaths. Mm -hmm. So you gotta. Like make an oath to someone, um, like like a spirit, and the spirit will give you their powers if you make the the oath and hold by the oath. Are, are we talking like a straight up like paladin thing, or is it like y you can make like a romantic promise that gives you powers? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah! I love that shit. Um, it seems to be sort of like Paladin or, or Warlocks. Um, that being said, some people, from what I understand, are more connected with their spirits than others. Like, mm -hmm. some, like the main character basically has a stand. Aw, oh, sick! Uh, that being said, his his oath is super hard to uphold. So want to hear what he want to hear what he, his oath is? Mm. To protect those who need to, who can't protect themselves. Want to hear what he's in? A war. So as you can tell, no. shit's hard for him. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention the fact that he is also incredibly depressed. Ah. Uh. Like, um, Mood and worm. I will say this now. Stole my archive. Don't read it if the topic of suicide is triggering. The main character has suicidal tendencies. But they're treated very well. Yeah. Like, they're, they're treated like how you would treat an actual person with suicidal tendencies. Mm hmm. But, um, yeah, it's. And all that, that I'm thinking about just kind of all the main characters of the books are super fucked up. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, Mistborn, the main character, Vin, uh, Street Urchin. Yeah. Uh, abusive brother. No. Uh, her mom tried to fucking murder her when she was a kid. No. Uh, and on top of that, 
Uh, if she was discovered that she was a Mistborn, she would have been murdered. Oh, also, no. she was considered part of the lowest, like, cast. No. So, you know, not, not the best situation to be in. Good thing she murdered the fuck out of the douchebag who started that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, why do why do like dramatic stories need to have drama? I think I think there's actually like a canonical reason why the main characters are usually incredibly traumatized, and I think <laughs> I, I, I I read I read um I read a, a novella in between book one and two of Mistborn called Secret History. There uh -huh. is one. It confirms that there is in fact an afterlife. <laughs> Sick. Uh, two. It confirms that there is kind of two. Oh, vision. Um, specifically, when people die, they most of the time end up in this area called uh the cognitive realm, which is like thought, right? That is where thought forms. Then there is a thing called the spirit realm, which is where the idea idea of something forms, right? And everything has a spirit. Everything. I'm talking about chairs, bows, individual blades of grass all have their yeah. own souls. Hell yeah. Uh, humans, as well as, hello, Electra. <gasps> Electra, hello. As, as well as just like uh, general... sapient species i guess you can say um all have their own individual unique souls and apparently the main character of vin's main soul is actually disconnected from their cognitive and physical self Wah. so that's neat Wah. but yeah hello electra sorry i was in the middle of a thought but <laughs> nerdy ass books <laughs> yeah Beth, Beth was talking about a fucking book with a sick ass, ass magic system that's also sad it's actually yeah uh I mean they kind of they don't super dwell on it <laughs> <laughs> that's fair um it's a drama that means it's sad I mean, I'm like, of course, there's sad moments, but they actually, they, you know, they don't super dwell on the sadness a whole lot. At least in Mistborn. Mm -hmm. um, if anything, they kind of focus more on this ethos that one of the characters named uh, Kelsier, Kelsier uh, established, which was survive, mm -hmm. uh, which kind of helps people pick up themselves, I guess. Uh, and not like succumb, right? Uh -huh. uh, Kelsier also became kind of a cult leader by the time he died, with him no. as the, with him as the god. No. But in doing so, and in letting himself die, he kind of gave the lowest caste a new god to worship so they can overthrow the old god of the the lord room so he's also in okay. fortnite fortnite yeah he's also a character in fortnite <laughs> wait what he's a character in fortnite wait okay hold on what what what's his name again i'm googling it kelsier i'll, I'll, I'll show you you can just look up misborn fortnite he's in fortnite Mistborn Fortnite. Fortnite. What the fuck? What the fuck? It's it's Kelsier. <laughs> here, I'll here, here. <laughs> folks. Folks and folk folk ets. <laughs> Unnecessarily gendered. <laughs> gamer dudes and dudettes. Yeah, gamer dudes. And especially 
King would do that. <laughs> Come take a look at Miss Board Fortnite. <laughs> Miss Board Fortnite. I, I like how they don't even give him his name. It's just Miss Born, Fortnite Miss Born. Miss Born. Fortnite. And I, I like the fact that they use, um, one, I just realized that is a hemallergic, um, spike. But also, uh, I like the, the fact that he's using a coin. Yeah. Because in, in the book, um... He, he kind of does look like dog shooting cheese. Um, <laughs> in in the in the book, um, Vin and Kelsey are, uh use coins as like bullets, using um, iron and steel. Like I like you know how iron pushed metal away from you. Uh huh. Um, they use coins and they like they shoot coins like bullets at people. That's sick as fuck. Yeah, and they also they also use said coins because it's, it's like weight proportional, right? Yeah. So like, if you if you have um if you have a coin in your hand and you're holding it out in front of you, right? It'll launch forward and you'll barely move. But if yeah. it hits a wall and you're still pushing on it, you'll launch backwards. Because <laughs> it's against the weight of the wall, so what they tend to do is they like they, they drop coins beneath them, so they can basically fly. <laughs> like they, they they push themselves super hard against the coin that's on the ground, and they just launch into the air. They they kind of like troll physics it a little bit. But yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> they put they put oh. oil on themselves when it rained. I, I was gonna say this before when you were showing Kelsier F Fortnite Mistborn. That's his name now. Yeah, that's his, his official name. <laughs> uh, there's a character in League of Legends named Talon, who kind of reminds me of this guy. Talon. I don't know who he is. I'll look him up. Uh. Which, which kind of. I guess it's like a half dunk because like Talon is like oh he's one of the so more... edgy yeah not only is he edgy he's his design is super boring for League <laughs> yeah to to be in in my defense <laughs> the, the the reason why Mistborn dress like that is because the the, the individual bands help. One, not let them get caught on metal. Yeah. Uh, two, break away. Like, the, the each strand breaks away. Like, string cheese. Yeah. Um, and three, it helps them blend in with, like, ash and um, mist. Because in, in the setting, um, some reason, the world got so fucked up that it, like, permanently spews ash. Whoa. And at night, a mist appear. So they wear that to blend in with ash and mist easier. Yeah. See, like, that's that's not, like, completely dunking on Kelsier's design, because, like, Vin also if does anything... Like that. That's how the main character dresses, too. <laughs> I, I was gonna say, like, it, it's like they took Talon's generic I'm a shadowy assassin character but made it like cool and also more appropriate cause like League of Legends is a series where like fucking anything can exist and like one of their characters is just boring edgy rogue from D&D &D, made by yeah. a 17 year old <laughs> But, like, I, I, I like when things kind of, like, expand on simple character design to make it contextually very cool. Like, 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 yeah, like, making it neat. Yeah. 
And they, um, I mean, they also give like an in in universe explanation too, right? Which is like it helps them hide. <laughs> yeah. Because Alamancers are effectively are the rogues. Like they don't have to be, but like the Sporn tend to be like the rogues, to put into D and D term. Yeah. And I, like not, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Plus, I mean, let's be real here. We all went through the glitter, glitter dog phase. Yeah. I think specifically, I. I... Oh my god. Oh my god. No. No. I, I never really thought about it before, but I was gonna be like, yeah, haha. Mine was more like the the black and red, like. AG punk aesthetic. Yeah, glitter dogs. And like, <laughs> now that I'm older and I can design my own fashion sense, that's kind of like how I dress in real life. And I, <laughs> if I can help it. Ah, <laughs> uh, that, that took me a second to make it click. <laughs> I'm like, I, oh, I could, I could hear, no. I could hear the girl. The girds. I could hear the girds. <laughs> I could hear the, the, the gears turning. <laughs> the girds tearing. The girds. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know. It's just super, um, I like, I like this board. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Otherwise, the only other things I've been really reading have been um, role-playing games, uh, like Vison, which I think is how it's pronounced. Vison. 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 Do you do you know the word? No. Do you know the game? I, I, <laughs> I think it might be Vison. I, I think I'm like half echoing it and half like trying to parse it in my brain. It's like it's V A E S E N, but it's also like uh, I think Swedish. Oh, interesting. So I'm not sure how how it's um, supposed to be pronounced, but it's an interesting game. It's like it's a game where you investigate, and uh -huh. uh, it's in, like encouraged that you don't fight the monsters because they'll probably kick your ass. Yeah, I like stuff like that. Um, instead they they encourage you to like appease and like and or banish the monsters, which is really interesting because some of their appeasements are so weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's one. There's like a weird fairy bug parasite, right? That like burrows into your flesh and steals your face and then puppets your body before it rots away. Um, the way to appease it, because it's intelligent enough to to negotiate with, is you have to spit on it every day. <laughs> you have to you have to just go like every day because it eats spit, which. Mm. <laughs> you, <Yeah. laughs> know. you know yeah no. i feel like i don't even need to say it you know yeah no there's some people <laughs> do that willingly <laughs> yeah <laughs> and um it's just it's super neat uh there's a horse named a brook horse uh and it drowns you that's it. That's all it does. It just drowns you. Nice. Yeah. It's a, otherwise, it's kind of a noble horse. <laughs> um, so, something about like these like horse things in books are so like threatening. <laughs> Valid to eat fingers. Why? Why are horses so scary? Uh, I think it's implied because they are. Um, some horses are. 
built like uh, predators. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! But uh, there's also there's also like I don't know. I feel like horses do tend to carry a sort of symbology behind them of fear. Um, yeah, what the hell's up with that? I think it's probably a deep-rooted fear of cultures who have not been able to contact horses and then suddenly being forced to contact horses. Just think about it, right? Uh, for a while, probably, even like in ancient, 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 ancient history, right? People had to run everywhere. And then all of a sudden, this motherfucker over here, Jimbo, is like, hey, <laughs> boss, I want to ride that thing. And they're like, maybe you shouldn't. And then he saw it's doing it and he can kill things way better. <laughs> right? Copy and paste a thousand years, especially with cultures who have never seen a horse before. And all of a sudden, like in the English Isles, there's all no horses naturally in the English Isles. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the horses were brought over by the Roman Empire. And they'll probably be like, what the fuck is that? Right? Oh. Huh. It's like how it's the same thing happened with the Native Americans. They've no uh -huh. Horses not naturally occurring in the Americas. There's no horses in the, in the Americas. Really? Yeah, they were never in the Americas before uh, Spain brought them over. Spain, Sp Spain brings them over. Suddenly these people who have never seen these things before just start dying from them because they were riding them on horseback. It makes sense that horses kind of ended up becoming like a, uh, a symbol of death amongst cultures. Huh. The harbinger of death. I I never really thought about it before, but now that you say that, like, huh? Right. It's like that... it's like how in um in Greece and Rome there were a lot of myths about elephants being demonic because they've never seen elephants before. And then the Carthin like Carthinians and Indians rode them like horses. Yeah. And murdered hundreds of people with them, right? Yeah. It's, huh. pro it's probably the remnants of survivors being like, this is being like, guys, I promise <laughs> you that deer had a person on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably like, and that's probably how like things like the Nukalave came to be, uh, came to be, which is like a Nukalave. For those who don't know, is a uh, Celtic myth uh, of a skinless man on horseback, as in uh, he is a centaur, kind of. Uh, specifically, it is a skinless man with their lower body in used with a skinless horse and they are a harbinger of death <laughs> that's scary what the hell yeah there's a lot actually another thing about there's a lot of horses in in uh like botanica um that are like death bringers uh, <laughs> right, they're, like they're, like this the nekalave right there yeah. is the kelpie which is a horse mermaid that drowns you yeah uh there is the brook horse which is a noble horse that drowns you a lot of, <laughs> a lot of them drowning people <laughs> there is um the dulahan which is not necessarily a horse horseback uh-huh or horse-strung carriage most of the time uh stuff yeah. like that right it's like it's a lot of horses <laughs> yeah I think also, like, not just, like, the cultural thing of, like, what the fuck is this weird creature that has been brought to our aisles, this but also... This little creature. <laughs> getting into mischief. Up to no good. And then, then, then they see, like, the horse, like, kill someone, they're like, ugh, the <laughs> beast is demonic in nature. <laughs> very icky. No, no good. good. Let's make stories about how they're very icky and no good. <laughs> um oh no I was, I was gonna say though like i think there's also like a layer of like horses just feel very intimidating as an animal too 
like probably especially for like cultures that aren't used to like horses like like for for example like the, the British Isles like they got like you know like I, I, I'd assume like farm animals mostly right uh, the British Isle I think the naturally occurring creatures there were other than like birds I think were primarily like pigs wolves and sheep like the sheep at the British Isles were um, notably different that's why like it's a big deal having like British or all the British sheep. Yeah. Because they're, yeah. they're, um, I think it was like compared to normal sheep, which have like six hair of follicle, British ones had like 12 or something like that. So there, there was, it was like super silky, like chinchilla silky. Ooh. Awesome. But like, I think, like, you know, like, their most threatening creatures are, like, big, but not, like, tall. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, they're, they're less, like, they're, they're more the type that are, like, sharp and fast and, like, have teeth that can bite and shit. So, like, I think even just, like, horses being horses and being, like, fast but also having a lot of stamina and also very tall feels very and very muscular like you can yes almost yes. always see a horse's muscles yeah it feels very like off-putting i can see what you mean with that yeah yeah it, you know what i i think it kind of feels like in a sense have you ever seen like those um what's it called like the 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 google ai generated images yes i think i have yeah like like sometimes you get ones of like they're kind of based on animals so you can kind of see like the animal form but like it's just really uncanny and off-putting because it's so almost right but very incorrect at the same time yeah that's what horses feel like in real life <laughs> <laughs> like like uh, like you you look at it it's like yeah that's an animal but also it's fucking creepy horses are mistakes that's the moral of the story tonight yeah <laughs> Aren't there whole, like, legs, like, bones or something? Well, I mean, I, most, most creatures, um, most creatures' legs are made of bone. <laughs> I think, I uh... think you meant that most of their legs are made of fingers, which, yes, yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, are, in yeah, fact, yeah. The horses, the majority of their, um, legs are fingers, uh, and they walk on their their toenails, um, which is one reason why when a horse breaks its leg, it tends to need to be put down. It's because it's basically breaking its hand. While not super mechanically, apparently mechanically intensive, it's intensive enough to the point where if a human, well not a human, if a, if a horse breaks its leg, it's most likely not going to be. Able to. Uh. Ah. Yeah, that's fucked. Horses are fucked up. Yeah, horses have kind of been... Kind of like dogs. Kind of were, like, genetically ruined by humans. Because, uh, 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 uh. um, one, one big thing is that, uh, horses actually... Um, riding horses is relatively a new thing. Horses yeah. for the longest time, um, like all the way going, like I'm talking about, like going all the way back to like Greece, right? The reason why you never see people riding horses, in myths, and said they only use chariots, is because horses were too small to actually hold a human. It's only until recently that horses actually got to the size where you can ride them on on their backs. Uh, uh, huh. Horses are not meant to be as big as they are. Really? Yeah. 
Oh no. That's why their legs are so fucked up. <laughs> huh. So it's people's fault. Yeah. You, you fucked up a perfectly good part of nature. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of is is what I, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> um, the the um, it kind of reminds me actually. <laughs> Going to another segue. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to talk about this uh, at least before we end, I guess. Um, get, get us out of the horse topic. There is another book I've been reading, like a role-playing book, yeah. called um, Forbidden Lands. Uh-huh. And Forbidden Lands is a role-playing game that's kind of like an attempt to go back to the more classic, um, like... D D style game. It's like a, mm-hmm. a lot more brutal, right? Uh, a little bit more Tolkien uh, yeah. in, in style. And uh, it is very interesting uh-huh. because there is a sort of plot line that is can be described as humans ruined everything <laughs> uh-huh because basically if you know humans were an invasive species in the setting right uh uh-huh. it follows specifically the story of a continent which i don't remember the name of humans sailed from somewhere else in the world an unknown area in the world they sailed into the into the continent and it invaded Right. They are they are literally an invasive species. Yeah. Um. They got one human warlord got so desperate that they uh started to summon demons. Oops. That's and no that good. caused the end of the world. Oops. That's no good. So that's right. This game is actually post-apocalyptic. That's why it's called The Forbidden Lands. It's because the land is forbidden because the world ended. (sighs) (laughs) Is it, like, desolate? And it's not desolate, actually. Like it, it is what I like to call a uh, realistic end of the world, is, and in the fact that um, it's not like a nuclear bomb was dropped. It ended because society completely collapsed. Like what what cool. what remains is like uh, remnants of societies of like once powerful nations, uh, and a albeit changing ecology due to the massive amount of demons flooding into the world at every given moment. Yeah, no kidding. (laughs) (laughs) But it's kind of neat. One thing I really, really like is um, they, like, it's very Tolkien-esque, right? Like, like, you know, elves and dwarves being there since the beginning of time. Orcs just kind of appeared one day. Halflings... Halflings are probably the most different thing in the entirety of the setting from like Tolkien and Clashing Team. Yeah. Because get this. During the day, they have the appearance of like Tolkien halfling or hobbits. Same yeah. thing, right? Like they like to drink, they relax, they smoke, they party, stuff like that. As soon as the sun goes down, they go home, they puke in the flower bed and beat their kids. Oh, shit. Get this. In this setting, halflings and goblins, same species. Huh. Halflings happen just to have rolled the, the, the dice 
on the looks department. And they look quote unquote normal. I say that with huge quotation marks. Yeah. Uh meanwhile, the goblins didn't roll so well, so they look like goblins. They are the same species. There is a 50% chance that if there's two halflings boinking it, the kid that pops out is a goblin. There's a 50% chance that if there's two goblins boinking it, the kid's gonna be a halfling. Huh. That's really interesting. What the hell? Yeah, it's it's super neat. And there's like there's a lot it's like it's it's fucked up too, man. <laughs> like if if there is if there is two if the, if there is um a goblin family that has a halfling kid, and if there's a halfling family with a goblin kid, they will swap the babies. Oh shit. Like it is a fucked up thing that happens, and they they the book makes it clear that what the halflings are doing is fucked up. Right? I appreciate that, right? Because I feel like there's a lot of things in, in particularly with these independent um, role-playing games where they don't acknowledge the fact that the things that they come up with is fucked up, right? A little, bu- little fucked up sometimes, you know? Right? And in, in this case, the, ha- the, the book completely acknowledges that what the different the cult kin uh, what the different kin do is super fucked up. And there's only like a handful of them that embrace the, those skeletons in their closet, right? Like Dwarves, humans, elves, they all have skeletons in their closet. Only the uh-huh. orcs, wolfmen, and humans really acknowledge those skeletons. Huh. I... I... Appreciate orcs in general. Yeah. For from what you you've described, I want to assume that like orcs are written well in the setting. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're still the little Tolkien esque in the fact that they are um quick to violence and a little bit more tribal. Um, that being said, uh. They have their own society, even if the other quote unquote higher races, and they, they say like that's a thing the dwarves and the elves arbitrarily made up to make themselves feel better. <laughs> um, even if the quote unquote higher races don't think what the orcs do is society, they have like a pretty advanced society. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're just like the ogres from Shrek. Like, yeah, everyone kind of, yeah, like, actually, looks down on them. But, like, they, there's more to it than meets the eye. Yeah, that's actually a pretty apt comparison. <laughs> yeah! Man. Oh, I was talking about this with Kalmata, like, literally yesterday. Like, I, I wish there was more of this kind of, like, sentiment of, like stories that tell the message of you are still a complex worthy and lovable person even if you are someone or something that society deems lesser for stupid arbitrary reasons like literally that's all Shrek is and like it's such a poignant story for this day and age and like everyone just memes on it when it's like actually super like impactful makes me makes me a little sad yeah anyway that's that's my tangent (laughs) it's all good (laughs) like it's just i i just think it's it's super super neat how they handle uh the like the orcs the orcs Humans and goblins are the most hated in the setting when it comes to the other races. Uh-huh. Uh, 
the orcs, humans, goblins, and kind of wolf humans, but they're also maybe demons. Um, the orcs, humans, and goblins in the setting are also the most open with, with their faults. Uh -huh. Right? They, they acknowledge their faults. In fact, the orcs see faults, so like scars, beauty marks, things like that. Is that the frog prince? <gasps> Yo, it's Frog! Hello! Go to sleep, Yagubus. <laughs> Have a good sleep. Uh <laughs> Yeah, the it, it's super it's super neat, right? Um I, I appreciate the fact that they like the, the orcs, right? They 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 view like uh, scars and stuff like that um, as something to cherish. Yeah. Um, like physical deformities, especially if an orc can get over said physical deformities, is seen as a thing to be prideful over. Yeah. Um, and a thing to be loved amongst their society. Uh, I, uh, I love that. That's awesome. Like, the biggest thing that they value is courage and the want and will to try the thing that they hate the most is cowardice so like if you give up in a fight that will cause you to be shunned not because you um for instance like if you're born with like a deformed hand they will work to make it so that you can still function uh within yeah. the society and like dwarves and stuff not that good people not really that good right if you're a deformed dwarf you're gonna be shunned and ostracized Man, and, what the fuck? and i think i think uh like i said though right they the dwarves have a whole lot of skeletons in the closet that they refuse to acknowledge compared to the humans orcs and uh goblins 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 <laughs> Man, what well, what was this again? Uh, it's a it's a game called Forbidden Lands by uh, Free Press, I think it's called. I'm I'm going to Google this so I can look it up later. Yeah, it's called Forbidden Lands RPG. And the previous okay. game I was telling you about about like trying not to fight the the monsters. They're called uh, it's called Bison. I think it's by the same company actually. Uh, oh. What? How, how do you spell it? Vason? Yeah. Oh, it's, oh, it's it. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna go look those up after the stream. Speaking of after the stream, is there anything else you want to talk about? Or do you think it might be a good place to wrap up? Yeah. If you're good with wrapping up, I'm good too. I'm good with wrapping up. I feel, I feel like the moral of Hey, if there if there's nothing wrong with you just because your art conforming to society standards is a great place to end. Yeah. So let's find someone to raid. Do you want to uh shill shill and farth while I look find some? <laughs> uh, hi, I'm the Maple Magic. I'm a rat cool PNG tuber. Uh, I play lots of Sega, lots of Sonic. I do a lot of these streams where we just fucking talk about whatever. Um, I'm kind of in a place where I'm not streaming as regularly as I used to for reasons TM. TM, 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 TM. TM, 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 TM. But, uh, I, I do appreciate every follow that I get. Uh, I have my my big thing currently is playing through every single round of Shadow the Hedgehog. So if you are like dumb, <laughs> isn't, isn't it like fifty different routes? <laughs> How naive you are! Is that is that a low low number? Uh, try three hundred twenty six. <laughs> <laughs> 
and, and that's if I do every round without accidentally doing what I've already done. Which I have done on stream before. Like, I've accidentally done routes that I've already done. <laughs> just need to have, like, a checklist. Let's go down the checklist. I've been meaning to make, like, a, like a Google spreadsheet. Jesus. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot. I, yeah. If you yeah. haven't, if you haven't, or if you haven't followed Maple, please do. Maple's I... a cool, cool rodent. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for the follows and stuff like that, even though I know it's a bit late for a lot of people. Um, I appreciate everyone who followed and attended, especially if you're new here. Uh, I found a VTuber. I don't... I've rated them before, I think. I don't remember them, really. So, here's hoping it's not the situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's let's start the raid. Uh, probably streaming tomorrow. They don't have work tomorrow. Oh, nice. Uh, what time? I don't know. Probably before seven. <laughs> probably my usual time's like noonish, maybe. Yeah. Uh, EST. So, um, I hope you all have a wonderful night. Make sure you get yourself some sleep and something to drink, and I'll see you all next time.